welcome to another episode of RGU Talks. Today I am joined by Rachel Adidokun, a current student of RGU, who's here to tell us of her experience of bringing her family to study with her here in the UK. Rachel joined RGU a few years ago to study her MBA. She has progressed on to now the second year of her PhD programme in Aberdeen Business School in the research area of energy transitions. Rachel made the decision to bring her child to study with her here in the UK and it's on that topic that we are going to speak to Rachel today as she's kindly agreed to share her personal experiences of um, bringing her family with her. So hello Rachel and welcome. Hello Michelle, thank you so much for inviting me. To so the first question for you, Rachel, is once you got your offer to study at um, RGU, can you talk us through how you made your decision to bring your daughter with you and what kind of things did you have to consider? All right, thank you so much. Um, okay, so bringing my daughter with me while I was coming to the UK was um, a very big decision. Well, it was a decision that was driven by my values because um, I believe in um, if I have to actually develop myself personally, then it has to be a family development. And so that you know, drove my decision to bring her um, along with me. And um, it wasn't just my own decision. It was a collective decision with my husband because he works in Nigeria and uh, we had to collectively decide on what's best for her. So. Important uh, important factors I had to consider was things like, okay, what's even best for my daughter? If I was to come to the UK to study and she was to be in Nigeria, who would take care of her and who would actually do a better job, you know, than I will? And I realized that it was best I bring her along with me. And um, when we decided that, okay, we we're going to bring her, I was going to bring her to the UK with me, we had to start thinking of child care because she was barely 18 months when she came to the UK and we had to start thinking of, okay, where will she be? You know, what nursery will she attend? And I was particularly um, skeptical or careful because at 18 months she could barely express herself. A lot can be different from country to country around childcare provision and, and childcare kind of culture um, and so on. So what is the best advice that you can give people when they're considering bringing their families with them to, to study here in Scotland? Um, yes, um, for children um, below the age of three, it's very important to, in Scotland, you know, it's very important to be aware that, you know, there are no child care for that hours available for children under three. And uh, most of the cost or even all the costs will be bared by you. And if you and the cost of childcare in Scotland compared to Nigeria, it's really not on the same level. You know, it's really, really, really expensive. You know, so it's something that one needs to consider. And also, the structure of the nursery is different from Nigeria, whereby you can just walk in and you know, say okay, um, you can walk in and just say okay, you want to keep your child for the week or for the or for the next two weeks. In Scotland, it's more structured. You have to um, you have to book ahead of time, and uh, you might need to even lock down with space. You know, so I think while I advise them for someone bringing in a child below three, you have to first of all look at your finance and count the cost. Also, it would be good for you to also try and book a nursery space from Nigeria and not wait to the last minute when you get here, because the space could actually get filled up uh, quickly. Or you might not even be able to get a nursery that is close enough to the house. And then, you know, you you end up going through a lot of stress trying to commute, you know, from the house or from the school or from the university which, you know, you're studying, which is, could be RGU, you know. So I think that's another thing that you need to consider. Another thing I would like to say is one needs to also consider the demand of your study. Mm -hmm. If your studies actually, you know, is demanding, then you might need to think of alternatives to it. But for children that are both three years, you know, there are, you know, schools that um, there are uh, schools that children goes to. So and they must they don't pay actually for it. So that cost is actually um, taken off um, 
of the parents' um, neck. And I think, yeah, so that is it. So in terms of um, coming to the UK with a child below three, I would advise that based on my own experience and based on what I've seen, I would even say maybe best practice. Some students come in alone, settle down, and then bring their family over. So that gives them the opportunity to even learn the UK life and even um, settle into being a student. And then bringing over the fam their family over makes it even easier for them to just transition. There are also situations whereby you could bring maybe your mom or maybe your sister while you come in, you know, with your kids and that will, at least you will have support while you're trying to settle because it's not that easy to actually be looking for accommodation to be going for registration and doing all of that with children because you have to start thinking of where you keep the children because they've not started school or they've not been registered and all of that so um like when i came into the uk for the first time i came with, i came in with my husband so it was easier for me to settle into the uk life you know while you know he helped me look after our daughter so that's something that, you know, I think you need to consider and pick which one you are more comfortable with. And then also, I will also advise, you know, people who are coming to the UK um, to link up with either friends or families that they have, you know, in that particular city, because no amount of support, you know, is too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, you know, all really, really helpful things to, to share from your experience there, Rachel. And just to kind of summarise for, for people, I think it's about doing your research, isn't it? Understanding yes. how, you know, what the childcare provision is like in Scotland, because it can be very different, as you say, and, and is in very high demand and with a cost that might not be you know, in line with your expectations. So definitely do your research, do your planning. And then that other thing that you said about that kind of key arrival period and maybe looking at traveling with somebody or perhaps your family joining you after you've gotten through that first wave of everything being new and different and, and you're just familiarizing yourself um, with, your, with your new life. So loads and loads of great tips there. So thank you very much. Um, this one is a, is a universal question, so it's it's true for anybody that's um, studying and, and has children. And it's just to ask you if you can share with us um, some practical insights. So how do you balance? How do you do it all, Rachel, between studying for your PhD, looking after your daughter, having a life, you know, running a household and earning money? How do you do it all? <laughs> Thank you so much for the question. So one thing I know that has really helped me is, um, is that I'm a good planner. If you want to work and study and at the same time um, have a healthy um, family life, it's important for you to plan. So I, I plan everything. And um, one thing I have learned is that it's important for you to study the time and the season. So for every facet or aspect of your life, you know, there are times in which the demand is really high and you have to actually put in your best and all of that. So giving a practical example, there are times whereby I have um, workload and um, school load or school, maybe let me say cost works to submit or, you know, school demands. And I make that a priority because I must not miss the deadline and I must do well and you know, so that becomes a priority at that point in time. There are times whereby, you know, my daughter becomes a priority. For example, she just started in primary one and the whole, you know, period of settling into the new, um, the new facets or the new level of her life, you know, becomes a bit stressful for children at that age. And I had to actually give her more time you know, to ensure that I give her that time to actually come home and just me about her new friends, you know, and the joy she made and all of that. So that's, and then there are times whereby I have work demand, you know, that I have to just make priority at that point in time. So I think for me, it's all about planning and actually knowing when, you know, the workload, you know, will be um, tricky. Then I know another thing I, I that helped me also is that communication, it's important, you know, to ensure you communicate, especially with your family members, because 
they can support you when they understand what's going on with you and they understand, you know, where they can actually come in. And that has really, really, you know, helped me because at times I might just need support from my husband or support from a friend, you know, and they actually show up for me because at that point in time, I had actually communicated to them, you know, what I'm going through or, you know, where I need help. And I don't hesitate to take, you know, to um, to ask for help when the need arises. And there's something I also do. I ensure I create time for myself. There are times where I tell myself it's a me time and I want to take a break from being a mommy, a wife, a friend. I just want to be me and I actually enjoy it. And so I think that helps me balance everything and, you know, at least be successful in everything. Well, I think that's so important because if you don't look after yourself, you you can't be a wife and you can't be a mother and you can't be a student and you can't be a colleague and a friend. So it is really important that you're kind to yourself. So that's nice to hear that you do that. And I think also there's only 24 hours in any day, isn't there? So like I say, planning and, and having a you know list of what you want to achieve and, and what is your greatest priority, I, I think. Um, sounds a really smart way of giving me some tips for how I should live my life um, as well and get better at it. Um, so we mentioned at the start, some people will really be weighing up the positives and negatives and really undecided about if it's the right thing to bring their family to, you know, often several thousand miles into somewhere very unknown. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what you feel the positives have been of bringing your daughter um, with you for this chapter in your life? Yes, thank you so much for the question. So for me, I, uh, for me, it was more of a peace of mind because it was very important, you know, as I study to ensure that, you know, my family is doing well. And in this situation, especially my daughter, because, you know, she can't help herself. You know, so it was very important for me to have that peace of mind that she's fine. And um, so that's part of the that's one of the benefits of bringing, you know, your family over. You know, if you bring in your family in terms of your husband, for example, you, your dependent actually has opportunity to work in the UK. So, you know, it's it's easier for them to actually, you know, for the household income you know, to actually go around because you as a student, you can only work 20 hours in term time, but here, you know, could actually work, um, you know, 40 hours or 35 hours a week, which could actually, you know, go on to actually help the family. And then another thing is the benefit also is expo exposure and growth. So when you bring your family over, it gives them the opportunity to get exposed to what you are being exposed to. It also gives them opportunity to grow which is also very, very important in this um, in this situation. Then also it creates memory because, for example, I've been in Scotland for over three years now. And does it mean that the family life will come to a pause in terms of creating memories? No. You know, so bringing your family over gives you opportunity to continue to live life to the fullest and at the same time, you know, be a student and for me it had made Aberdeen home because my family is here and so I'm more settled compared to when I feel as if I'm a student that's living in the next month or something so that has actually made me settle into the settle into the UK better you know than someone without a family that has a family in Nigeria so yeah so those are the, some of the reasons why um bringing the fa your family to the UK is really is really great. Oh that's that's lovely to hear and and actually what you've you know shared with us is that absolutely there's challenges and and stress and you know different things that have to happen when you're coming with your family but actually there's also different rewards and and different benefits and different positives for going through those challenges and stresses and, and so on. So I think that will give a lot of people that kind of sense of better understanding in, in making that decision. You come in with your family to the UK, it's easy for you to integrate into family circle. 
because if you are even if even though you have a family in Nigeria and you come to the UK, it's difficult for you to actually meet other families, you know, that have, you know, that are just similar to yours. Because at that point in time, as if you're single. But when you come with your family, you're able to meet, you know, meet um, other families that are maybe even going through the same challenges or going through the same phase, you know, with you. And it's the journey, the journey go um, when you go through a journey with friends, you know, it's less as um, bumpy as when you go through it alone. Then you can also leverage on the supports, you know, from friends and, um, and families. So I think it's very important for you to try and um, identify people who are like you or people who share the same value because they can always be a support system when the need arises. So Rachel, so far we've focused quite a lot on you as a student and your journey and your travels and, and so on. But I'd like to flip it a little bit and ask you if you've got any kind of advice or tips as a parent because it's obviously a big change for your daughter coming from Nigeria and there'll be a lot that you've learned from the outlook of being a parent um, coming to live in Scotland. So is there anything that you'd like to share in, in that kind of topic? Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I think um, it's important for parents that are bringing in um, children below the age of five to come in with their immunization um, card you know, that contains the history of the child's immunization. This is because um, at various um, stages of the child's development, um, immunization is given that varies, you know, from Nigeria's own to the UK. And um, doctors or medical practitioners are very careful not to repeat some of this immunization. So when you go in to register with a GP, you'll be requested, you know, to present me with the history of the child's immunization. So it's it's good. It's not compulsory for you to present it, but it's good for you to have it handy with you so that you don't have to begin to try to remember, you know, if the child has, you know, received any of the immunization that you have been asked. Then also, um, it's important to also um, identify the main food that the child eats. And um, while moving to the UK, you could actually bring maybe just a limited supply of um, of of the child's favorite food or the food that the child eats regularly. And this is just because it gives the child opportunity to transition, you know, to the UK food because UK has a lot of good food and nutritious and healthy food for children. But it gives them the opportunity to actually, you know, transition from what they used to eat and um, to the new um, um, meal. So I remember while I was traveling, I had to bring pap for my daughter because she loves pap. So I just brought in a bit of it. And immediately that supply was over, you know, I could actually, you know, um, look for substitutes. I have one final question for you. And it's just a personal curiosity that I have. Your daughter has now been here in Scotland for most of her life. If I've understood um, the dates correctly, does she have a little Scottish accent developing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. You know, she, she actually, um, I think some months back, I didn't realise that, you know, her accent was totally Scottish until when I had her speaking to someone who was Nigerian. And I just could hear the sharp difference in you know, <laughs> the English. And I was telling my husband that I didn't, it didn't really occur to me that her accent was totally different from mine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so she actually has, you know, the Scottish um, accent and pronounces things the way Scottish does. Oh, that is so cute. That is so cute. <laughs> her too, and I learned from her too at times because there are some words that I pronounce and she would say, oh, mommy, no, 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 no. That's not how to pronounce it. And she was okay, say I mean, then put them together. And you know, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> so yeah, I'm learning how to pronounce some words through how to. 
That is so sweet that you're studying your PhD and your primary one daughter (laughs) and you and she can kind of exchange information and help each other learn. That is just so lovely to hear. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for your time and for joining us today on RGU Talks. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed listening what you shared um, as much as I have. So thank you so much for that. And for those of you listening, I hope you'll join us again on our next episode of RGU Talks. And until then, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all the normal social medias. And if you've got any questions about RGU, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And if you'd like to connect with Rachel, you can do that through the RGU website by going to the Chat to a Student or Staff member page and you'll find Rachel there. So thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you very much for having me.